guys, welcome back. Reese and Ben here at Pursuing Atelier Arts, and today we're going to be covering my time in Germany covering Vista Korborg. Check it out now. Alright guys, so the first part here is the main entrance to Vista Korborg. So here is an overview of Vista Kurberg. Uh, you can see this place is massive. We were there for most of the day and only got to see about one third of the exhibit. So if you plan to visit, I recommend you make it an all day event. So here is the lower part of the museum. So we'll make our way up some, through some stairs here and where the courtyard is. So here's the top part after we get through the uh, lower entrance. So checking out some of the various buildings through here. Alright, so here in the main courtyard, uh, Arne was explaining how him and a few others had jousted in a small area, which is uh, pretty impressive considering how small it was. So not much room to ride, but they did a couple passes and fought on foot. So here we got to meet up with uh, Arne's friend, uh, Dr. Alfred, so he's a curator of the museum there. Uh, he was nice enough to give us some... Uh, backstage access to some of the pieces. And First, we wanted to check out some of the uh, outer wall defenses. Being that we're with the curator, we get to go past the ropes. And here, Arne was uh, explaining to us how since the battlements were so narrow, he didn't really have much space to draw a bow. Came to the conclusion that probably more than likely used crossbows. Of course, this is a bit later, but a lot of original battlements are just this narrow or even narrow. Yeah. Here we get to see uh, a slit, but also uh, a murder hole, so you can throw debris or oils or otherwise during the sieges. And the slits in the walls were that you can hopefully fire upon your enemy without going hit yourself. This is your little, just like part of a murder hole plus a slit? Yeah, this is for guns. This is for oh, guns, okay. absolutely. So next, uh, Dr. Alfred was going to show us one of the tallest towers in uh, Vista Kurper. Uh, not very handicap accessible, but I was very determined to uh, get up there and check it out. Now here I continue my climb to the top. Here we reach the upper wall. Here this is kind of neat uh, showing how the tower is constructed. So Arnie wanted to take some pictures of that. So here, uh, go to a window and see that uh, a very, very beautiful view. So here is the very top of the tower. So a very, very small room. I'm glad I did it, but I don't know if I'd ever do it again. And what museum wouldn't be complete without a gift shop? 
So here we uh, see a gift shop, uh, various things here for sale. And what every household needs is patents, medieval patents. And here is one of the first galleries covering arms and armor. So here are various uh, swords, uh, executioner swords, some rapiers, some sabers. Of course, those are mostly the later period. They even had a spear with a foot lock on it, which is super interesting. I like the detail of this sword here. It had a lion's head on it and uh, some very detailed gilding. Now we get to the good stuff, the armor. So this is armor from probably around the 16th century, uh, more suited for jousting. So you'll notice that the, uh, the gauntlet there on his left hand isn't very articulated. Essentially just uh, enough to where you can hold your reins. Here's uh, various pieces of surviving armor, again from the 16th century. So most of these look to be uh, reinforcing plates. Uh, this one here is especially interesting to me because uh, you see, you'll see here in a moment, there's, there's various pins and clasps to hold the visor, including a hinge piece that allows the visor to be propped up. And here we're seeing some more uh, harnesses here. Um, this is one at the very end, that's a style of Maximilian. So 16th century again, most of these are gonna be 16th century. Here towards the back you see a couple of displays covering mounted knights. Uh, supposedly the one on the left has a surviving lance. So Arnie came there with his tape measure to uh, record some of the measurements. Here towards the bottom you see uh, various styles of spurs. So here you see uh, various pieces of armor that are gilt, so gold. So process that would have been used for this was to heat up mercury and add gold to it where it would be inlaid on the metal. There are some more reinforcement plates, probably the, for the counters and the pauldrons. And here we see uh, some more examples of some fan plates for lances and a gauntlet uh, here we see a uh, German salad helm uh, this is from, from uh, 1480 so if you notice here the slits in the front are very very narrow it has no visor so this is probably one of the highlights of the collection for me
Here we see example of a 16th century helmet and the uh, next to it is a visor for tournament use. Here we see a, a nice wall displaying chamfrance, the uh, horse armor for the head. Here we see a display case showing some uh, lance tips, uh, cornell for a joust of peace and uh, one sharp in the background for a joust of war. And uh, here is a, uh, a harness displayed on horseback. So you get to see the reinforcement plates with the horse's armor, and uh, as well as the mail covering the front, which I thought was especially interesting. And same thing with this horse's uh, harness here was a little more elaborate, so had some gilding and, and etching. Uh, the display here wasn't the greatest. Uh, the mannequin is not really shaped like a person very much, so the armor pieces were not fitting quite as well. Here we see some surviving pavises. I was really admiring all the detail uh, that was painted on them. So oftentimes you see lots of elaborate uh, floral designs as well as uh, coat of arms. So could be a household that they represent or were a part of. Here we see another helmet here from the probably the Renaissance period. Um, I say it's probably the Renaissance period being that it has acid etching designs. So this is a popular method to decorate uh, one's armor during a time period. And it uh, looks like he has a knightly chain. So earlier I had shown examples of gilding. So here's another example of gilding within a harness during the 16th century. So here uh, we enter this one room and it's uh, all hand carved. So this one was really, really interesting because uh, the theme was mostly hunting. So I did some close-ups of all, all the images here. So each one is different. Um, they show them hunting various types of game. So passing through, we come across these uh, displays showing all these various locks and a few flint locks. Very impressed at how large and complicated these locks were. Uh, here shows the, uh, the back side of the, the one lock there. So I came across this piece here, I found it really interesting because you see a, a series of coat of arms all around it. So it could very well be a tournament trophy. So on the way to the armory, I came across these executioner swords. Uh, these are, you start to see commonly during the uh, 16th centuries, and some of which even have some inscriptions on the blade. 
Not to say it's this one, but there are inscriptions of these swords, and one I recall that read, When I raise this sword, so I wish this poor sinner will receive eternal life. So here we get into the hunting gallery of the museum. And uh, through here we see various examples of firearms. So here we see some examples of some crossbows. This one depicts uh, some hunting scenes, which is common for a lot of these. So all these crossbows, you'll see various uh, devices to draw the string back because the string is just so heavy, you can do it with your hands. Alright, so these are pretty cool. This is dog armor. They'd often use dogs to hunt uh, bigger game like boars and deer and such. So to protect themselves from, say, boar, they'd have this armor made. So it looks to be some sort of a padded cloth armor. But uh, it was really interesting. If you look closely, you can see all those little eyelets. So allow, allow for some ventilation. And here we see a gigantic gun. This is uh, supposedly used on a boat to hunt a uh, bird. So here we see some examples of various uh, hunting knives, so which are proper among noblemen to carry while hunting. And, uh, some boar spears and nets. Here's a, a couple knife sets. So again, they often depict uh, hunting scenes. Some uh, hunting knives even had some utensils part of their set. And now finally we get to the armory. So most of what you see here is gonna be 17th century. So have guns, Bihanders, pole arms on the sides, and then the left side we've got uh, these shelves full of munition armor. So in between the shelves you had uh, some almost complete harnesses here from 17th century. And towards the back, you've got some pole arms. So it has uh, lots of variety of pole arms, including halberds, bill hooks, and the like. This bill hook was probably among my favorite. Some more examples of some armor, 16th, 17th century. We've got uh, racks of rapiers and sabers. And 
Here we have uh, some great swords, uh, otherwise called Byhanders or Zweihanders. This harness here was uh, especially interesting, just how the the design and the amount of rivets. Uh, this one here is uh, presumably made for a child. This one here was probably the highlight of the exhibit. Uh, this is a bassinet from the was dated the 1400s. Uh, this, this one's pretty interesting because it's a clap visor. During the later medieval, uh, sorry, later 14th century, you start to see they had two hinges on the side because they found that to be a lot stronger than the one in the front. And of course, the, uh, the bassinet is missing the liner and the male aventail that would have been on there, but the verveil survive. So you can see how that would have been attached. Here we see some Maximilian armor. And then a male shirt. So if you look closely, you can see how small the rings are. Up towards the throat, you'll see how dense they are. Uh, here towards the back, uh, we see some swords and two displayed here at the top were of the Norman era. So these would have been used against mail. And again, uh, some more swords. So these are rapiers. Uh, I like the display here quite a lot because uh, in the corners here, you see uh, depictions, artwork from fencing males and, and depictions of duels. And of course, uh, towards the end of this section here, we see some weapons used for against harness. So we have uh, some flange maces, some hammers, all ranging from different time periods. Uh, this uh, flange mace, the bottom, I thought was really interesting. It looked to be, it was painted. So it had some red paint on it. All right, guys, that concludes the video. We thank you very much for watching. Had a great time in Germany, especially in Vista Korborg. Uh, I had seen a little bit of stuff in the museums here in the U.S., but it's not as extent as, of course, ones in Europe. So it's always really important for us to study the uh, surviving examples of his arms, arms and armor and uh, seeing how they compare to the surviving treatises. So it goes a, a lot of uh, scholarship involved with, with not just studying the source or sources, but also studying both aspects of arms and armor as well. So, um, but uh, yeah, next year, hopefully get uh, Ben out there, the General Museum. Uh, we're looking into, uh, Arnie's looking at doing it back in, in uh, September this year. 
And uh, we were also talking about maybe potentially getting to check out some of the surviving treatises, so like uh, Gladiatoria and stuff. So really, really excited about that. So as always, guys, we appreciate you watching. Uh, thank you very much to our supporters our pen on Patreon. You guys make the channel happen, and it was awesome to be there. So we hope we look forward to getting you guys more content like this in the future. So as always, we'll see you guys next video. Take care.